As you awake from a deep sleep, the sounds of the forest echo in your mind. Birds chirp in the morning sun as the antelope graze nearby. As the sun rises over the African savanna, you are kicked in the face by your child. As she wakes up on your chest, both of you have slept in a tree hollow over the night. Your bed is nothing but leaves and broken twigs. A comfy place for an ancestral hominid. The year is 3.2 million years ago, though to you it doesn't matter. It's just another day in the Rift Valley of Africa, in modern day Ethiopia. Your name is Lucy, you're an Australopithecus afarensis, an ancient hominin, one of the earliest ancestors to modern day humans. This video is brought together by various archaeological and primate behavior research. Please be aware that there is a trillion questions about Lucy and only a million answers. So many aspects of her life are unknown. Climbing out of your tree with your child clutching to your chest, you walk upright moving towards the roots of the tree where the rest of your family awaits. Grunting, sniffing, you greet all in the morning light. You are currently in a group of 20. It's made of your sister, brother, children, and their children, and other Australopithecus that have joined your group over time. How you'll communicate with the rest of your group is debatable, although it's likely a mixture of grunts, noises, and physical gestures to transfer information. You'll begin your morning by grooming your brother. This is done to increase social bonds, promote positive interactions, and done to remove parasites. Your brother will respond by grooming you on a later date, or by providing fruit or childcare in exchange. Currently, you roam the savanna of the Rift Valley in Eastern Africa. You spend your time partially in the trees and in the savanna, depending on what predators are nearby and what resources are in the area. The trees that dot the savanna landscape provide a safe haven from lions and hyenas but offer little protection against the beasts of the air, such as African crowned eagles and leopards who gingerly reside in these trees. Following the grooming, you'll, you'll follow the scent of fragrant fruit hanging in the air, luring you towards a neighboring fruit tree. As the fruit tree calls you to its juicy fruit, you proceed with caution. You remember the dangers present across the savanna. Life as an Australopithecus is incredibly dangerous. Predators and hidden dangers lie all around. Lions roam the savanna. Baboons attack any intruders. Hyenas prowl the highlands. Venomous snakes lie in wait, ready to strike. Giant eagles fly high in the sky. Hippos and crocodiles guard waterways and rivers. Leopards and saber-toothed cats run across the grasslands. Buffaloes antelope, elephants, rhinos, and prehistoric giant llamas could easily trample an Australopithecus caught in their way. And other troops of Australopithecus are on the prowl, attacking and injuring any foreign groups entering their territory. How often this occurred is still unknown today, though it is likely groups of Australopithecus did go to war, either in competition for scarce food or for other resources. While little has actually been done on the subject, it's very likely Australopithecus troops behaved very similar to chimpanzees, often going to war or seeking out enemy individuals trespassing on their land and killing them. Though these dangers lie beyond animals, flash floods can occur and easily sweep away any Australopithecus unwary of the approaching waters. Lightning can create wildfires which rip through the grasslands, burn the tree shelters, and scar any animal caught in their flames. Disease is rampant from contaminated water and can easily turn any healthy adult into a sickly being. Parasites from worms, ticks, fly larvae, and mosquitoes can easily infect any adults and young. Though for as many dangers as there are, you must carry on. These dangers will eventually become everyday hazards to watch out for. Walking out to a nearby high area, you have your target set. A fruit tree lies on the horizon. 
and between you and the tree lies a field of grass and a herd of buffalo. It's only one mile away, though there lies great risk in this reward. You've exhausted your local food supplies, and your only choice is to walk to a new area. Calling your troop together through a series of grunts, shouts, and, and banging against the ground, you begin walking towards the fruit tree, marching as a group. For protection, you'll carry stones, you'll carry your young close to your chest, and you'll carry sticks to act as weapons. As vultures circle high above in the sky, and clouds dance across the horizons, you feel the heat of the African sun glaze over the grass and soil the savanna, as you watch for movement in the grass. Leopards, lions, cheetahs lurk in the grasses, and are often only visible by the grass they rustle through their movement. Your eyes watch and scan the area as you all move quietly towards the fruit tree, step by step. Walking towards the tree, you arrive safely to its shady branches as the rest of your troop follows closely. Though just as quickly as your troop gets to the protection of the tree, a cheetah dashes out of the grasses and snatches one of your youths. As a wave of shouts banging against the tree, grunts, and ape noises resound through the grasslands, you and other Australopithecus throw rocks, throw sticks, and try and intimidate the cheetah in backing off though it's no use. The cheetah drags the body of the youth away, back into the grassy abyss. The tragic reality of life three million years ago. Though you've lost one of your troop, luckily the tree is brimming in fruit and succulent leaves to eat, as juicy crickets wander around the area. Life as an Australopithecus was all about survival. The constant struggle of the day was in obtaining food, Often, Australopithecus would have to travel for miles to find food, leading to an omnivorous diet being composed of nuts, insects, meat, leaves, roots, fruit, and whatever can be found. As the fruit tree provides your troop with an abundance of food, you spot a nearby mound behind the tree. As some vultures peck at it with their golden beaks, walking further, you notice it's the corpse of a wildebeest likely killed by that nearby cheetah. Calling some of your troop, you gather your sharp stones and rocks and begin the process of peeling the little flesh off the bones, scraping it with a sharpened rock. Taking your stone, you begin smashing the long bones of the deceased animal, snapping the bones in half and sucking out the nutritious marrow hidden inside. During this time, the height of technological advancement was in the creation of sharp rocks formed by striking them with other rocks. This is known as Oldowan technology. Controlled fire at this time had yet to be invented. In addition to clothing, shoes, and even jewelry. Unfortunately, as you have no access to fire, all the meat, marrow, and fat you scrape off the carcass will be eaten raw. While it's nutritious, there is a slight chance it may cause illness. Everything that you have learned and all the dangers that you know to be aware of, you are currently teaching your youth and your children. You teach them how to bang rocks together to create sharp flakes and tools. And you teach them signs of food in the area and what can be eaten and what cannot be eaten. All the information that you have learned, you learned from your parents. You will pass on that same information to your children, and so on and so forth. The reason Australopithecus was able to survive at all was due to their unique social and community bonds, allowing them to transfer and teach information to their children, and to ensure that they can always count on each other. As the stars shine bright in the night sky above, as the stars shine bright in the night sky above, and the Milky Way looks down, you'll clutch your child close to your chest as you dream of never-ending sunsets of the savannah. Unfortunately, I'm not able to provide every aspect of the life of Lucy or an Australopithecus afarensis. However, I hope this short video offers some insight into what life for ancient hominins was like. 
If you have any questions or comments about the video, please leave them. And thank you for watching.